Okay, uh, General, thank you very much for your time. It's really a great honor to have you in this interview. Since uh, you are writing on different international issues, particularly the security issues in Pakistan, my first question would be, we have more than 900 kilometers of borders between Iran and Pakistan. And many, of course, common realities and cultural common grounds are there. But unfortunately, Iran and Pakistan relations has always been, at least after the revolution of Islamic Republic of Iran, somehow based on the security issues and misunderstandings, rather than understanding and gaining the full potentials out of these two countries' relationships. How do you define that? I think um, there is a desire on the part of both the governments to have very good relations. There is no doubt about it, because I think both realize that is it is in their vital interest to have a very smooth relations, and those relations should cover um, not only just diplomatic niceties, but also very solid uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, in a way, uh, they want more trade, more economic interaction, they want more political sort of uh, also visits by various leaders of uh, Iran to Pakistan and Pakistan to Iran, and also develop a certain relationship which is based on mutual trust. And, uh, but as you very rightly this, uh, you know, emphasized that Pakistan and Iran have a large border, that also is a very important subject uh, of discussion and also keep vigilance on the part of both the countries uh, that this border is not used by drug traffickers or those who want to disrupt the relationship or, uh, uh, you know, between the two countries. So uh, I think uh, this remains a very uh, great challenge, the border uh, activity. And uh, we have seen in the past that there have been misunderstandings as a consequence of that. But uh, over a period of time, uh, I, I think those misunderstandings have been largely reduced and there is a greater level of cooperation between the two countries, which is a very positive development. And now I, I think uh, from what I can make out uh, is that there is a general uh, normal sort of a, uh, activity uh, on the border and both the countries in a way uh, have developed uh, some sort of systems whereby I, I think the movement of trade and uh, other goods and also of people uh, is uh, rather relatively much better than what it was in the past. That's very true. Uh, there is an increasing anti-Taliban consensus in Iran and since Iranian believes Pakistan, particularly the Pakistan army, has a strong control over Taliban, unfortunately these consensus against Pakistan is also developing in Iran, especially after that border clash between Iran and Taliban government. So how do you address this issue and how, how would you, you know, what is your idea on this issue? Well, I think uh, the <clears throat> policy and philosophy of Taliban, I'm very much against it personally. And I don't think it's a, a philosophy or a policy which the Taliban are pursuing or in any way uh, related to the present conditions of the world. And they are, I think they are la lagging behind in time uh, and I think they are living in a different time frame, which is, uh, uh, I think, very detrimental to the interests of the people of Afghanistan and obviously has consequences for its neighbors, both of Pakistan as well as Iran and other Central Asian states. But, uh, you know, it is very difficult. I mean, we can't interfere in the internal affairs of Afghanistan, just as Iran cannot interfere with, uh, you know, in Afghanistan. The best is that in, we can uh, really give them advice if they seek so and uh, try to make the best of the present situation. And uh, uh, as you were, uh, as you are aware, I think there is also a cooperation between Iran and Pakistan regarding, you know, how to deal with 
the Taliban. Um, at the moment, I think uh, the Taliban have uh, the frozen the country in time, and uh, their uh, interaction with the rest of the world is very minimum. And uh, also, the benefits that, as I said earlier, probably also, uh, that the benefits that would have accrued as a consequence of uh, Afghanistan and Taliban being a normal um, sort of a political party and a normal country in Afghanistan, then I think uh, it would have been in the best interest of the region and of the people of the region. Do you still believe that Pakistan army has the much says influence in the war over Taliban still? Well, I think uh, amongst the institutions uh, in Pakistan, yes, uh, surely they have greater inf uh, influence. Uh, I would call it influence or uh, they, uh, they have a greater interaction with them uh, because of the border in, in, and also uh, his, his historical reasons. And uh, obviously, uh, I think the Taliban do interact at times with the military leadership or mutually the military leadership does you know interact with them but now i think uh, it's more for trying uh, in a positive way trying to sort of uh, stabilize uh, the borders as i said and to ensure that there is no uh, you know um, activity on the border which is detrimental in the interests of the two countries smuggling and so on. Yes. If the tension between Iran and Afghanistan doesn't stop here and it uh, start overblowing the whole region, especially if uh, about the problem of the water between Iran and Afghanistan, the reaction of Taliban on the border, how do you think Iran can get the best use and best cooperation of Pakistan to deal with Taliban issue there? Well, I hope, um, you know, the situation would not arise uh, because uh, all said and done, irrespective of how sometimes one thinks that the Taliban are very rigid, which they are, but, you know, when it comes to very hard issues, uh, I think there is a greater level of pragmatism, um, in, you know, that they apply in their relationship with countries. And similarly, I expect that this would be uh, what, uh, the, when it comes to uh, what you said, the border aid problems, water problems, border problems, they will uh, be more uh, flexible than what they are. Okay. Uh, another question regarding Pakistan-Iran relationship is that, unfortunately, after all these years of neighborhood, after all these relationships, very thoughtful and good words, exchange of very good communication between the government heads of Iran and Pakistan. Still, there is a huge misunderstanding of Pakistani culture in Iran, where you ask Iranians to travel to Pakistan, they just imagine that they were going to travel to Afghanistan or Herat, they don't have any clear expectation. The same even is here in Pakistan, when you talk about Iran, the development in Iran, the infrastructure, the freedom of, you know, movement in Iran, especially the empowerment of women section. How can we, uh, you know, just increase a bit of awareness here and decrease and eliminate those misunderstandings? After all these years of experience with international issues, how do you suggest the practical steps to increase the awareness between Iran and Pakistan, particularly in the people to people basis? Well, I think uh, there has to be a greater movement of people from between Iran and Pakistan. And that movement will only take place if there is any interest in the part of the people to go to another country right. and to invest in travel and so on and so forth. So what you need is to increase the trade between the two countries. That is uh, one of the basic things that have to be done. You have to also increase uh, uh, tourist activity between the two countries. And uh, so you have to sort of do a little advertisement of each other as to what are the possibilities and where can the Iranians uh, go to in Pakistan, 
what would be what would attract them uh, religious sites at the same time uh, you know other resorts uh, tourist resorts uh, what would attract them similarly what would attract pakistanis in iran and uh, there are of course uh, you, you know lot of attractions in iran uh, and uh, still despite um, uh, the fact that it is not to the maximum but still people from pakistan go to iran every year in very large numbers and so do iranians come to pakistan so i think this is a very important question it is in the interest of the two countries both in terms of uh, uh, you know the economy it is also in terms of developing a good understanding of each other developing greater fraternity and bonds between the two countries so i think uh, it's a plus uh, movement or a point Uh, that uh, you will uh, uh, benefit both the countries would benefit by greater interaction and i would fully agree with you that this potential uh, has uh, not been exploited and in the last several years uh, in a way it, it it is very minimum and uh, needs uh, and though the two countries are not really focusing uh, on, on this aspect probably they are so involved in their internal issues and matters that they have not really uh, benefited from the enormous potential that exists by the interaction of the two countries that's very true uh, as a person who served in the military and establishment of pakistan how do you see the future of pakistan in let's suppose the uh, next 10 years do you believe pakistan will continue the same actually path as it has uh, it has experienced in last 7 decades or do you see any kind of big shift here after all this happening in pakistan i think pakistan um, to be very honest uh, is going through a very difficult period uh, and um, at the moment as you know its economy is in deep distress yes. and um, we are very much dependent on the imf and uh, the world bank and other agencies and other friendly countries so i think uh, the economy is uh, going through a very difficult period so uh, is the political system and uh, there is not such harmony as there should be yes. uh, and i think we are hoping that you know being a democratic country um, if we have elections uh, you know on time which uh, we are hoping that these would be held uh, within the next 3 uh, to 6 months and uh, if that happens then i think there is a poss- very much a possibility that things will stabilize and uh, will be much better and uh, there will be uh, more openings for criticizing each other in a formal way uh, and uh, trying to sort of move ahead and bring about stability in the country and strengthen the institutions i think uh, you know all developing countries including pakistan has a serious problem uh, of uh, you, you know not realizing the importance of strengthening institutions every institution itself should be strengthened you know in the, in the sense that the political parties must strengthen themselves yes. by having correct elections by choosing the right leaders and so on and so forth similarly the other institutions should remain within the bounds of uh, the constitution uh, and uh, then the interaction can be much better more smoother and will strengthen the country uh, very much and we are hoping that uh, this realization amongst the uh, you, you know leaders of the various institutions should be there uh, and as you uh, probably hinted uh, we have gone through a very difficult period in the last uh, few months or years uh, and we are hoping that we have learnt some very good lessons from that uh, and we will try to and the leaders should try to sort of steer the country now and especially the responsibility rests with the political leaders uh, although the leaders the judiciary the military the you know the bureaucracy they all uh, have also 
their own problems and also they should um, correct themselves. But at the same time, uh, I think the major responsibility of steering the country rests with the political leadership. And uh, at the moment, um, it's not totally satisfactory. Uh, there are uh, problems, but uh, as I said, um, people's pressure, and the state of economy, the external uh, image of Pakistan, and all these things should compel uh, our leaders to reassess their uh, present plans and thinking and move the country in the right direction. Okay. Uh, my last question would be always in the interviews. What do you think we can, as a Pakistani nation and a Pakistani statement, can learn from Iranian experience? Well, I think, uh, you know, there is always, you know, so much to learn from each other. I'm a great believer in that. I think, uh, firstly, one has to believe that you don't have to uh, wait for a revolution to take place. If you have the right type of leadership, you can correct course of the nation. That's right. So I think Pakistan should learn from Iran and other countries that the best way of stabilizing Pakistan is to see to it that the people of uh, Pakistan are satisfied. They will only be satisfied if they, the economy is doing well, if there is political stability, if the law and order situation is good, and that means good governance. So it's a, I mean, it is a normal demand, but considering, as I said earlier as well, that the conditions had deteriorated to an extent that this would remain a challenge. But there is no alternative but to sort of work towards this end. And I'm sure that uh, the people's expectations will be met, if not fully, at least to an extent that we can gradually move to the point when they would be satisfied. So you believe that there is no possibility of revolution at this stage in Pakistan? No, I think that stage has uh, been crossed. And, uh, uh, and I think uh, the economy would have really made, and then uh, the fact that Imran Khan also uh, has realized that, that it is not a good thing to sort of go into a, a, such a situation right. whereby you really uh, sort of uh, destroy create everything from the ground. ground. So I think uh, uh, things have slightly improved but a lot more has to be done. And, but the possible, and thank God, the possibility of any sort of civil war or anything of that kind uh, is not there. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your very precious time. I know thank you are a very busy man and you are also, I think, uh, moving very soon to a trip. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate your time. I hope you and I wish for you and I pray for you are health and your prosperity much more than what you have right now and hope to see you very soon again. Thank you so much. It's Thank very so kind much. of you. I really enjoyed a very good question.